Independent Investor Channel. For those who have not caught my highly on coverage over the last couple of years, um, I wish to update you on where we currently are with this company. Um, we are at a precipice in time here for ground floor investing. For those out there that understand a little bit about what it means to get in on the ground floor of a company, it can be life-changing. So I need you to stick with me. This is going to be a shorter offering. I'm going to update you on the progress of the company and give you my insights on where I think we are right now, which I've had the pulse of this company dialed in for the last three years. I've covered the company since its SPAC and coverage of uh, SHLL and having turned to public markets here uh, with its uh, pre-commercial uh, stages that it has gone through over the last couple of years. We are on the brink of what has been declared by Thomas Healy, the CEO, on the Q1 call as being a, a very calculated uh, checklist of uh, achievements along the line. The three remaining I will cover in this video. Very important for you to continue to remain diligent on this company and the developments that we have forthcoming here in 2023, coupled with the announcements that were released at the Investor Day. I know there was a lot of people in the community that actually attended. Thank you for doing that. I'm certain that the benefits that were had by actually feeling uh, what was going on down there in the Austin facility was probably worth its weight and probably only furthered your uh, conviction on this company uh, as the company is really on the precipice of turning the corner here. With regard to the stock price, I, I allude to opportunity going forward uh, and past performance meaning absolutely nothing. Uh, stock market investing requires zero emotion, requires nothing but perseverance and due diligence and a risk tolerance that is um, not prevalent in most people. It needs to be a learned evolution. And a lot of people have been drugged through a very fierce education in owning this company. However, I look at the stock action of the last couple of months here basing uh, in these low anemic ranges with uh, a company that is transitioning from uh, solidifying its checklist and moving from pre-commercial to commercial stage up and ramp up of their product. Now, in doing so, they've done a few things that I feel like are worth noting. Visit Hylion.com. They've revamped their entire website. There are uh, some interactive profiles on their powertrains. If you go to all powertrains, you can see actually the real iteration of the truck that is actually out right now uh, in controlled fleet trials, but actually see the makeup of the components and what Hylian is trying to do. They've revised their strategic vision uh, in that they are looking to achieve a status of being the um, world provider of powertrain solutions, and I believe that they can get there. They have all the pedigree, all of the science and technology and patents that back them up on this, which I still feel like is um, a revolutionary um, uh, innovation that's being brought to the class eight space uh, and soon to be perhaps even the day uh, runs in maybe the class eight space, but more of the shorter runs. They are really covering their bases and the story has evolved so rapidly over the last three years. The company that we knew three years ago is not the company that we have now today. The company that we knew two years ago is not the company that we have here today. So if you're looking at Hylion, I encourage you to look at Hylion based on the merits of the current status quo and not base your opinion on where they have been, the failed expectations, which there have been many in my coverage of the company, unbeknownst to new people coming into the opportunity. I highly recommend that you look at this with a fresh lens because the only thing that matters on covering this company is the forward vision for the company, the evolution of the company, the evolution of their product suite and portfolio, their ability to really start to solidify some of these products and introduce them into mass scale and realize what we are all anxiously awaiting, a promise to path to profitability, a promise to path to revenues, which we've been given some color on that. 
which was provided at the investor day. I want to, as we get closer to uh, closing out Q2 uh, of this current fiscal year, I, I really want you guys to understand that the Q1 call that was just released really marked a trans transitional phase in the company. But the last three remaining milestones that the company has right now, I will share with you now. Number one, extend the fleet trials. When that's going to happen, I have no idea. As a bullish share owner in the company with over 20,000 shares in the company, a great amount of share accumulation has happened at this in concert with what I feel like is a ground floor opportunity. And I share that openly and I share it exclusively through the independent investor audience. I don't share a lot of those opportunities. There are only a couple here in 2023 that I am as convicted on, and I cover a large amount of the stock market. Pileon is right there at the top with regard to my conviction buys, but their extended fleet trials is only going to continue to penetrate the class eight space that we are looking to put into rigor these powertrains that we have so anxiously awaited um, being put into the rigor and put some of these specs to the test and put some of the technology engineering uh, and and testing and validation that's went into the product, it's going to be incumbent upon share owners to monitor those expanded fleet trials, what that is going to mean. So I'll expect to see some more color on that on the Q2 closure call. Uh, complete certification, this has been a big milestone that I think has fallen on deaf ears. I think once that complete certification comes through, it should be a catalyst for the stock. No promises. I don't come on. I'm not a wizard, nor am I a fortune teller. Um, if you want that type of business, go find a tarot reader to find out what your future holds. My conviction lies in the share ownership of the company, right, wrong, or indifferent. If the company continues to remain at these recessed levels, no problem. It cannot be ignored forever. And with these looming catalysts on the horizon, I will be anxiously awaiting these catalysts as they come. And I think complete certification over the ERX product fueled by RNG, CNG, I think is going to be a huge, huge milestone, final stamp of approval on their flagship product. The, the, one of the very bullish conviction points and attributes of the company on why I invested in the company in the first place to help augment a class eight a trucking space that's been dominated uh, by diesel over the past history, small percentage of integration from CNG. But this really looks to turn the industry on its head where we have looming mandates on the horizon and OEMs and fleets alike are going to have to transition. It's not a question of if they are going to, it is a question of when they are going to, and it should be in context with the mandates that are coming that are really, for the lack of better terms, forcing the OEMs and forcing fleets who have been running diesel at the expense of the environment and the industry and customers and government agencies have said enough. You have to look at these solutions and you have to look at them with a new lens. You cannot be so critical to just dismiss all technology out there because in my coverage of the space, Hylion has one of the very few, if not the only solution that makes viable economic sense from a maintenance perspective, from a driver experience perspective, and from a total cost of ownership perspective over the life of the truck. Now, for you guys that want to get into the financials of the company, this is where there's a little bit of gray area with regard to the MSRP over the um, um, uh, the new uh, Hypertruck ERX. The costs have increased over time since this story has evolved. And just like across the industry, those costs will be passed on to the cu customers. So stand by for roles on the final MSRP. But I think those costs should be driven down over time as the supply chain issues start to kind of dwindle down. Hylion has an opportunity perhaps maybe to bulk up on its inventory and maybe potentially expand upon those margins in bulk buy orders. They are not in that position right now. As the company I have contended for the last three years ago, two and one year ago, is a brand new company. Brand new company 
looking to make its mark in the class eight space. So it needs to complete the certifications. When I do, I believe it'll be a catalyst for the company. Thirdly, looking to start production this year. I think this is going to be a small splash, I think, in concert with what the CEO, Thomas Healy, has discussed about shifting the timeline a little bit to the left um, with some of their few initial offerings uh, on the onset to get into the hands of the fleets that have probably legacy back orders, strategically deploy those fleets. And both John Panzer and Thomas Healy have talked about the importance of spreading out those orders to get the maximum fleet penetration. I feel like that was an extremely wise move on their part to make sure that we can get that penetration as wide span as we can. I think you can get the same amount of um, idea of whether or not it could be beneficial to your fleet, whether or not you have one or two trucks as opposed to 10 trucks. And so I think spreading those initial orders out will help eventually with follow-on orders uh, as they come. Those are the three. That will finalize the uh, checklist that was rolled out uh, a couple of years ago, actually, and Hylion has been working on checking those off. Those are the final three uh, checkoff uh, phases. I will briefly mention the website revamp, which is fantastic. It's much more streamlined, much more interactive, and much cleaner, and a lot less cartoonish, and a lot more uh, polished, uh, a lot more professional, much more 3D. Uh, optics allow a quick draw of would-be patrons coming in and doesn't understand the Hylion story. It tells the story uh, in a streamlined way, provides uh, uh, multiple conduits to the sales team, which I found was interesting as we're looking at a potential for looming commercialization within the next couple of years, I think especially a ramp up to be noticed in 2024, but I think the website revamp was a, po a positive. Finally, as we wrap down this video, I, I want to talk about Investor Day a little bit. The items that I was able to glean uh, from the insight of the people who were there and have provided those insights back to me, an overall net positive Investor Day. Uh, a couple of things that were mentioned is the day cab. Uh, roll out. We kind of knew that that was probably forthcoming. Hylion announced that to be available potentially in 2025. I think to earmark that and punt it forward is an opportunity to work on uh, the many things that they have in the hopper right now um, uh, and, and to focus on those items and getting those initial rollouts complete. 2023 earmarked at 10 million in revenues. Um, remember, we started as a pre-revenue company, 10 million in 2023. Whether or not you like that or not, I'm fairly neutral on that statistic, but it's the one statistic that was shared with would-be shareholders out there that was put out for the grander good of the order uh, to be scrutinized, extrapolated upon, uh, drawn uh, bull or bear conclusions on, but 10 million of revenues realized on their in-house uh, production of the initial rollouts of the uh, Hypertruck ERX powertrains coming down uh, from Peter built, partially built, specced out and and uh, get got to the finalized stage in uh, Austin and then back to Peter built for the final uh, certification check, stamp of approval and delivery to the customer. I think that relationship right there over time is going to be worth monitoring because as that relationship solidifies and we move more toward a potential integration to the line, um, that will be the largest uh, catalyst that the company has ever incurred through the life of the company. And I'll be eagerly awaiting that. The final thing that was mentioned is the stationary power, the Carnot stationary power generating unit being ready by 2024. I found this to be extremely bullish, very optimistic. Uh, we will see whether or not they can follow through on that, but another revenue generating uh, stream in their portfolio of products that they mentioned at Investor Day. So very exciting things. These are the items that I'm monitoring closely. With regard to the stock price now, don't expect me to comment one way or the other on a healthy company based on a stock price. I will not do that. Um, I believe right now, if you're going to look at the stock price, I can chalk it up as none other than ground floor investing. I will say it again, ground floor investing, and it doesn't get any better than this. And for the people who are early and often into a message like mine, 
who are sharing this opportunity with investors out there to understand the opportunity, to hear it from a bullish share owner like myself, will see the same thing that I'm seeing into the Hylion's vision for integrating the Class 8 space and the opportunity that could unfold for us over the next coming years. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message. Appreciate you hanging out with me. If you enjoy the message, subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. I appreciate, uh, appreciate you so much, and we'll catch you in the next one. Guys, good luck in your investment future.